So uh, now at the end, I also want to talk about uh, you know if you want to talk about it yeah. uh, about the uh, the string theory community as a whole. So do you mm -hmm. think that uh, you know the 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 job market for younger scientists is becoming harder and harder, uh, or do you think that it's not that bad as it is you know made made no, out to be? I think it is true. It is it is very hard. Uh, uh, basically, the pattern I have seen is uh, since I've only been in a few universities that it's people do get a first postdoc somewhere sometimes they maybe have to apply for a second year uh, but it, it is a little bit uh, uh, punch to the gut you know when you have done seven or eight years of postdoc and then you are supposed to you know leave the field uh, it does feel sad in some ways and uh, you know myself i've had many doubts whether to continue in the field or not over the years when i was a grad student when i was a postdoc why are we doing this? What is the point? You know, there are all those kinds of confusions. But I do think that, uh, you know, people are not bitter. Even when they are leave the field after seven or eight years of postdoc, as long as you enjoyed it, you had a good time, you know, you develop really good skills, uh, you end up in a good position. Now, it becomes a bit of a personal question whether you want to spend those eight years doing a postdoc or not. And I think one should be open-minded in times like this so one should not uh, you know that is would be my advice for example now my students in a few years will be applying for jobs is to keep an open mind and you know not to sort of pigeonhole yourself into uh, doing string theory even when you know you're sacrificing a lot of other things in life uh, you know you have to find your balance like there is no formula in life to have a happy you know, successful life. And basically at some point it comes down to this. Um, is it worth the sacrifices you are making? You know, it, are, are you getting enough of a kick out of it by doing research in HEPTH to make all the sacrifices you're making in terms of, you know, maybe money or family and things like that. Um, so you do have to, you know, take a judgment call at some point, you know, and, and, and that's part of it is you have to know yourself. Uh, you know, like I feel that I kind of got into string theory almost by default, as I was saying, that I was good at math and I kept doing this theoretical physics and I was sort of good at it and I got this job. I mean, it was hard. Like, I, for example, I tried getting a job in the US. I was got one place and one place in India, you know, so not that many options. But, um, but it, it's really about knowing yourself, uh, uh, what you want to do, you know, once you are 30, uh, you know, life starts to look more finite, you know, and um, maybe 35, when you're 35, it starts to look much more finite. And then, you know, you have to make a decision on how do I want to spend the next 35 years of my life or the next 10, 15 years of my life. And it really becomes a call about your value system and what makes you happy. Uh, so do you think but, that... But uh, just to answer your question originally, yes, sure. I do think the job market is hard and uh, one should acknowledge that fact. And help right. students, you know, when they are not finding postdocs or having a hard time to help them find other jobs or other fulfilling, uh, you know, careers. Right. So um, I've seen that a lot of, uh, you know, physicists from the HEPTH community uh, either go to industry or go to finance, right? So... Uh, you know, okay, so, so you have not done that yourself, but uh, you you may have seen people doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. So do you a lot think that, people, yeah. Right, so do you think that this transition is very hard, or do you think that it's not that hard for physicists? Well, I have talked to some people. Many people mm -hmm. love it, like they actually realize, oh, maybe I should have left the field earlier. You know, okay. many people have that reaction, you know, why did I continue doing this? I love it here so much. I mean, mm -hmm. have, I know people like in all sorts of like people have gone to Facebook doing just engineering, you know, to machine learning, to finance, to environmentalism, uh, various things. And, you know, people are, many of them are happy. Uh, you know, my advisor said this, that everyone he talks to who has left the field seems happy. <laughs> That's not true for people who are in the field. So, I can you know, understand. In, in some sense, uh, you know, one should not feel bad that one had to change paths. Sure. Uh, well, uh, 
as you were saying earlier that if you are in the field you are you know most probably making sacrifices when it comes to money for example and of course when you are leaving the field then you don't have to make those sacrifices anymore so there is you know a lot of reason there are, are, are a lot of reasons to be happy but what i was uh, re you know referring to uh, was that if you if you if your skills are in theoretical physics then is it true that you need to learn a lot of skills before going to industry? Do you think that this is true or not that's not well, exactly true? I think it is true that one has to train. It is not true that if I'm a theoretical physicist, just tomorrow I can go apply, you know, to a finance company and I will get a job. I think that's just not true. One has to train oneself. But because, you know, after a postdoc or a PhD, you have that much more maturity in thinking about problems. And you do have a math background, so things come to you more quicker. But there is a training period required. Like even the smartest students I work with, who are like eight, ten years younger than me, had to you know train for a full six months a year to get the best finance job, for example. So it's not trivial. Even all the machine learning people, the people who have gone to machine learning jobs in OpenAI or Anthropic, are very competitive these days. You know, one has to spend at least a year. Uh, you know, trying to learn some of those things before one can be competitive in those interviews. It's definitely not automatic. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so what you're saying is that it's not uh, that easy, but it's not that hard either. Right? Yeah, let's say give or take a year. It, it takes you about a year of dedicated learning of that field in order mm -hmm. to be you know, really competitive at the best places. Uh, I see. And a year is a big time in, in you know, some context. Like if you're a postdoc, mm -hmm. You're doing it in parallel with your postdoctoral research, and you know, so it's I it's see. non trivial. And one more thing that I want to ask you is that, um, well, uh, I'm sure that there is no a hard and fast rule for that, but if you can give give any ballpark uh, for the you know listeners, so um, if if you are in your PhD, is there a you know a number uh, a number of papers that you need to have in order to have some reasonable chance of getting a postdoc or do you, I'm, I'm sure that there's no hard and fast rule for that but any ballpark i think three maybe um, at least if you three. have three good papers uh, four good three to four good papers in your phd i think that's maybe three not even four but they need to be sort of you know if you have three papers they need to be three sort of good papers that people sort of and it's hard to write three good papers in, you know, five years, especially if you're applying in your fifth year and your first year, you're maybe only taking courses. So, so you really only have year number two, three and four, right? right. Writing three papers in three years is not easy for a, for a student. So, so even. I, I, yeah. Uh, and I also want to ask you that. Uh, so this is something, this is a question that I have struggled a lot with in my PhD. So do you think that uh, a student should work on diverse areas in their PhD? Or do you think that, you know, a narrow tunnel is better? Um, working, I'm not sure. Maybe working on a narrow thing is okay. But one should be definitely be learning other topics and going to seminars on other topics. Yeah, that's fine. So, but what about working on diverse areas? But that is, I think, not... Uh, sometimes it's not possible. You know, sometimes okay. you are in a place where there's only two people in the string theory department or the high energy physics department and you're working with them. Uh, you know, so it's, I mean, there are very few big departments now. So it's hard to diversify in that sense. And I think people who do that are in some sense lucky, but I don't think there's any disadvantage in being, you know, focused in in the papers that you write during your PhD. I, I understand what you're saying. So you're saying that there is no disadvantage. I completely agree with that. And you are also saying that sometimes it's not possible. That I also agree with that. Yeah. But if some somebody manages to do it, do you think that there is some disadvantage with working in diverse areas? No, no, there is definitely no disadvantage. That's not what I said. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no disadvantage in working in diverse areas, but I'm saying it's not completely necessary. It's not necessary for you I to agree. be a good, uh, you know, high energy physicist. But and, definitely and I, one could, you know, have an broad education and culture you know within the field that is very important sure and when i say diverse areas i also mean that if somebody wants to work on for example some foundational question and not string theory itself so do you think that that will help or no oh sorry help means what uh... well help in finding a help you in finding a job right but foundational in what sense what, so for example what... foundation of quantum mechanics well that's a hard field <laughs> i yeah. myself like 
you know think that there are things to be done there and people should think about it but you might have a harder time finding a job with foundations of quantum mechanics than string theory right right so well, well what i'm saying is i suppose that there is someone who has three papers on string theory and one mm -hmm. paper on foundations of quantum mechanics so do you think that that one paper will even count for the jobs or not i would say mm -hmm. that having been on the other side of the Mm -hmm. hiring cycle unless that paper is sort of very solid on foundations of quantum mechanics and that it has gotten some attention okay it might just be ignored i mean if there is a panel of you know high energy physicists reading it and uh, that paper is just there as oh i wrote this paper and there is no strong punchy conclusion there like most likely people will not they, i mean because you know the readers themselves don't have that knowledge to judge that paper Right, so right. so it ends up depending on which group you apply to for a post doc right so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and the youtube algorithm thinks that you will also like this video